So today we're going to do the handover video on this Bailey Approach Autograph 745. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. I'd like to start the video by explaining the van hasn't yet had a valet. Uh, I just wanted to get this video out to you just before you collect. So if you can look past any dirt that's on the vehicle, that'd be much appreciated. It'll be spick and span for when you come to collect. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side, you'll notice that you've got behind this flap your fill up point for your diesel tank. Opening up the passenger door, in the door here we've got your fill up points and your food grade hose pipes for your fresh water tank which you fill up on the other side of the vehicle so they're on the, in the door pocket there. As you can see your tyre pressures are just on the passenger door sill and underneath the passenger seat you've got your jack which is located here. On the passenger side as well, you've got your bonnet release catch, which I'll release now. And you'll also notice this particular motorhome is fitted with Remis cab blinds. To operate these, all you'll need to do is simply pinch the black tab and pull the blind out like so. Lead the blind from the bottom and let that connect up via the magnetic strip, as you can see. And do the same for the other side. For the front windscreen all you've got to do is simply pinch this black tab, release that and again using the magnetic strips you've got the same again on the other side, they will meet in the middle and again black out the entire cab. When you pop these back in, wait until you hear that click and then they're good to go, they're secured in place and then for the side windows again pull them and lead from the bottom. If you lead from the top sometimes these can get a little bit um, uh, they, these can get caught because they're quite uh, delicate so just lead from the bottom that just ensures that nothing gets caught and you can slide it back into position like so. Underneath the bonnet you'll need to know if you're ever going to jump start the motorhome. So your negative terminal just connects onto this point here as indicated by the sticker above and your positive terminal is just located down here. There's a flap just above that which actually has a little plus, plus sign on there so flick that up and your positive goes onto there. So positive and then negative. They're of course the main things that you need to know but just to point out a couple more things you can see you've got your engine oil here along with your dipstick which is just below that and then up at the top you've got your brake disc fluid, your engine coolant, your power steering fluid and then finally in the corner there you've got your washer fluid for the front windscreen. Moving around to the side of the motorhome, you can see that we're currently plugged into 230 volt electric. Just open that flap up, you can remove the electric point there. This will allow us to charge the leisure battery on board, but also allow us to use any 3 pin sockets or anything that's 230 volt in the vehicle. So like 230 volt appliances such as your microwaves, any kettles, anything like that, you can do so by plugging in to your on-site electric. Next to that, you've then got your fill up point as you can see in here, for your fresh water tank. Now, as I indicated when I opened up the passenger door, this vehicle uses a whale pump system. There's a little block that goes onto the end of this, so instead of using a generic hose pipe, connect the block onto here. That fits into this uh, mounting point here. And then your hose pipe can then connect to your tap on site. Then all you've got to do is turn your tap on, uh, tap on, go onto the inside of the vehicle and then on the screen there'll be a little icon that says fill tank. Click that fill tank button on, that will activate the pump and that will pull all the water through and pressurise it into the system. Now I'll show you how you do that obviously on the inside of the motorhome but it's just as simple as that. So all you've got to do, use that whale point that connects into there connect that to your hose and then you can fill your tank up. And of course it'll stop when it is 100%. So next up is your gas locker. In here you've got space for two gas bottles and you can see that your regulator has been fitted up at the top. All you'll need is a little pigtail which will screw onto this fit in here and that will then screw directly into the bottle and then you'll be good to go. Now please bear in mind that when you're traveling you should always have your gas turned off directly on the bottle itself and then when you're stationary and you're using the motorhome all you've got to do is screw the top of the bottle and that will release the gas and allow you to use gas throughout the motorhome. But when traveling always ensure it is off. So next to the gas locker, you've actually got a little, it says Vision Plus on here, this is a little aerial, so if you're using um, an on-site aerial, 
on some of your campsites they'll have uh, aerials built in you can actually plug into that and that will improve your signal um, for the inside of the vehicle if you're watching normal terrestrial TV so that can just be done through that point there and then moving just behind the wheel arch you'll notice underneath here you've got a grey tap so this is your first drain down point in the motorhome now you've got three drain down points throughout the vehicle you've got your wastewater drain down point which is actually this one here you've then got your fresh water drain down point and then your boiler drain down point so for all your drain down points as a rule of thumb is when you are leaving your campsite simply drive over a little uh, a big grid that you'll see and then obviously empty all the water you should always empty all the water when you're not using the motorhome uh, it doesn't really matter in the summer months because obviously it's not going to freeze if you was to leave water in the tank um, but especially in the winter months and the colder months always ensure that all your, uh, your tanks are drained down I personally even recommend doing it in the summer as that just gets you into the habit of draining that tank down but like I mentioned drive over to that, uh, that um, grid and for your wastewater tank all you've got to do to drain this down is turn this and that will drain down the wastewater once you've done that, and this goes for all your drain down points again, uh, and you've drained the majority of water on site, you can leave all your drain down points open, because as you're travelling home, that vibration of the road will just ensure that all that residual water finds its way out and makes its way out of the motorhome. So when you come to store the vehicle for the winter, or say for example in the summer you're not using it for a while, one, you won't get any stagnant water in the system, but two, nothing's going to freeze. So next up, towards the back of the motorhome, leads us on to your cassette toilet. As you can see, with the locker open, it gives you access to the cassette. To remove the cassette, all you've got to do is pull up on this orange lever and slide the cassette out towards you. Now, before you remove this, please ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed. Now, the blade is a piece of um, grey plastic, which is located on the toilet itself, on the inside of the motorhome. And you can open and close it, depending on when the cassette is in use. Now I will show you uh, how you can do that when we're on the inside of the motorhome but please ensure, like I say, that that blade is closed before removing the cassette. If it is open, it will basically be attached to the, uh, the cassette so when you come to remove this it will get jammed, it will get stuck uh, and it has been known that previous customers have then forced that which will rip out the float, uh, damaging the cassette and of course the blade. So always ensure that that blade is closed before removing the cassette. So providing the cassette pulls out nice and easy, pull it out to drain it. So to empty it, I'm just gonna pop it on the floor. All you've gotta do, twist out the funnel and remove that gray cap on the end. You'll notice right at the back, you've got an, er an orange button there. If you click that in, that will release an internal vacuum which will empty the contents of the cassette out into a big grid. Again, that will be on your campsite. Now, once you've done that, you can put a bit of water in this just to swill the cassette out. And using blue fluid, which will break down the waste, if you are using the fluid, that is, you can stick that straight in the cap. Don't use blue fluid, um, obviously, straight down the toilet. You'll just simply stain um, the toilet basin. Just put it straight into the cassette. And there's, as I mentioned, a little measurement on here to indicate how much blue fluid you will require, which will then break down the waste. So once you've done that, put the cap back on slide the funnel back into position and the cassette is good to go it can go back uh, into its position in there now you will also notice before I put it back you have got this orange dial here this actually moves now this is what makes contact with the blade uh, and allows you to open and close it this should always stay in this position if this is off slightly the cassette won't go in correctly so if you got it out like that it needs to go back in like that it's as simple as that um, so always ensure that that remains in that position. There's no need for you to turn that. And as I say, once that's all drained down, pick the cassette up, offer it back up to the locker and then slide it in like so. And you'll notice that orange lever will then clip into there and then it's nice and solid and it's not going anywhere during tra transit. Now above there, you'll also notice a little flap here. You'll need a key to open that. This is if you ever want to uh, put any flush for the toilet. So you can use, it's like a pink liquid. Um, it just means when you flush the toilet, it smells a little bit nicer. Um, it'll combine that with your fresh water and you can just top that up and fill that up in there if needs be. Moving around to the rear of the motorhome, you've got a bike rack fitted to this vehicle. I can show you how this works on handover, but it's pretty simple. 
Uh, obviously this pulls down and then using these tie down points here, these link around the wheels and these around the arms of the bike and then you can then just simply tighten these into position until the bike rack is nice and uh, the bike is nice and secure on the bike rack. Up at the top you've also got your reversing camera which you'll notice and then moving round to the side on right on the corner you'll notice that you've got a little Aldi um, vent. This is in essence the vehicle's chimney. It can get quite hot this so just give that a bit of a, a wide berth um, but that is the vent for or like the chimney for the vehicle. Moving out as well, on the top of the motorhome, you'll notice that you've got a Fiamma awning fitted to the vehicle. Now, I will send you a separate video showing you how that awning operates. Um, it's really simple. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult for me to do just with the one hand today. So, I'll send you a separate video showing you how that can operate. Please bear in mind that if it is a windy day, don't use the awning because, as I say, if you get a bit of wind underneath it, it will rip the awning from the van, damaging your van and others. And also, if it's raining, although it can be used in rain, you do need to, at some point, dry that awning out. So just bear that in mind. They're, they're the two things, sort of, just to consider. Um, but like I said, I'll send you a separate link and it'll show you how everything works on the awning. Coming back down to the rear of the motorhome, moving on from the chimney slash the vent, you've got another locker in here. And with the locker open, you can see it gives you a really good bit of storage. So you've got a plastic liner here, so if you're putting anything wet in here, you can do. And then everything else can actually be accessed on the inside if you wanted. You can see we've got your carpets back here. We've also got your awning winder as well, and your awning struts. Um, but you've got a really good bit of storage back here. Just in there as well is where your boiler is located, as well as your drain down for your boiler. But we'll go through that when we move on to the inside of the van, when I left the lift the bed up. This area is fully heated and insulated as well, so if you are putting anything damp in here, you can do because it will uh, it will dry it uh, it will it will dry it out. And then before we move on to the inside through the habitation door, you'll notice that on this side of the vehicle, you've then got your fridge vents. So this is where the fridge pulls all of its air from. Naturally, if it is quite a hot day, I'd recommend pulling the awning out just to keep this area under shade or turn the vehicle around just so it's not in direct line of the sunlight. That will just allow the fridge to run a little bit more efficiently. So just bear that in mind. Uh, you can also buy little winter covers for these. These snap onto these mounting brackets here. Uh, they're useful for when you're storing the vehicle in winter. Okie dokie, so we're now moving through uh, and into the inside of the motorhome. You can see as we walk through the habitation door, you've got your main control panel just above the door, as well as the Aldi control panel, which is for your heating. So the main control panel is dead easy. You can see that you've got your master button here. Click that on and you can see that will turn on and off everything in the motorhome. I will turn that back on. You can see that will turn all your lights on in the vehicle. And that's your main isolator button for everything. Next to that, you've then got your pump button. So if I click that, I'm going to just uh, silence that for a minute. Um, if I click that, that will activate your pump. Now, obviously, you only want to run the pump when you've got water in the vehicle. Um, obviously, if you run the pump without any water, you do run the risk of burning the pump out. So only run it with water. Okay. So when you're on site, you're filled up with water, click that pump button on, go to all of your taps, including your shower, and then turn your taps on and turn them to hot. What that will do is it will pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and obviously make sure that that boiler is sealed when you're doing this or else it will just trickle out the bottom and I'll show you how you can do that. Uh, but like I said, yeah, make sure that's sealed. That will then pull water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap. When it's running steadily, you prime your system for your hot water. Um, and then once you've done that, flick it over to cold and do the exact same. When it's running steadily, you've primed your system. Once you've done that, you can actually leave your pump on because each of your taps have got something called a micro, uh, I'm sorry, a micro switch fitted, uh, which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you need it. So it's dead simple. The only time you need to turn that pump off is obviously when you run out of water. So it's just as simple as that. Uh, and like I said, do that for your shower as well. Uh, next up, you've then got your lights. So I can turn on and off the lights in the motorhome should you want to. And then finally, you've got a little button here that says awning. The awning on here is just for the awning light on the outside. It's that little door light. Um, so just nice and simple. So you can click that and that'll turn that light on on the outside. Now to show you the screen on the system, um, to flick through the options, 
you've got these little arrows that go back and forth and of course you've got the select button which is the enter button in the middle there. So to flick through the options, firstly you've got the time to begin with, you've then got your water level, so this shows me how much fresh water is in the water tank. Your waste level currently, we're at zero so there's nothing in there at the moment. And then this is the fill internal tank that I was telling you about on the outside. So once you've connected that hose, which I mentioned, to the hose pipe on the site and you've connected it into the inside of the van, all you've got to do is go back to this and click enter. And that will allow you to fill the internal tank. Be dead simple, nice and easy. Click that and that will fill the tank for you and it will stop once it's full. Next up, you, this the screen shows you the external temperature currently and it will also give you the settings panel here. Um, give you your battery select in here as well so you can you can actually run all your lights off your vehicle battery should you want to. Now currently it's set on leisure battery. I'd recommend only leaving it on leisure battery because obviously if you run it off a uh, your vehicle battery you could drain um, everything in the, uh, in, the, in the battery itself so just bear that in mind. Um, now I'll go back to that battery select. So next up we've then got your leisure battery amps. It's not pulling anything at the moment, but read your voltage, which is 13.5 volts because we're plugged in. So we're 100% pretty much. And then we're back to your main home screen. So it's dead simple, dead easy. And then you're back to obviously doing the same loop. So it shows you everything on there that you need to know with regards to your levels, which is nice and easy. Uh, but like I mentioned, that master switch, turn that off when you're storing the van and you want to, uh, you know, you're done using the van, that will isolate everything on the vehicle. Now next up, Next to that is your Aldi control panel. This is for your Aldi heating. So to turn this on, click this on, just through the power button, and you can see it will load up the system. Now up here you can see that it's recognizing that we're plugged in. And if I click menu, it will then give me the options for heating. So firstly at the top here, as you can see, you've got your vehicle heating. So this is for the vehicle's internal temperature. So you can change this just by going through the touch screen just like so, you can increase that. You've then got your water temperature at the bottom, at the moment it's not on, but you can set it just like so, through the plus and minus arrows. And then below is what you want to fuel this system with. So you can either run it off electric, so that being one kilowatt electric, or two kilowatt electric, or even three kilowatt electric, depending on what campsite you're on. And then if you want it, I'll just come off that, uh, you can run it off gas should you want to. So I click that and I'll run it off gas. Now, I'm not going to run it off gas because obviously I've not got any gas supplied to the vehicle. Um, and if I was to select, say for example, the gas, all that will happen is I'll get an error code on this system and I'll need to reset it. So just bear that in mind. Uh, you tend to get an error code, as I say, because you've selected the wrong fuel. Um, so say for example, like I mentioned, if I, if I don't r do run this off gas because I've not got any gas in the vehicle, it will just get an error code, it will fault because um, it's protecting the boiler. And all, a typical error code that you can also get on these panels is an overheat red fail. Um, what that tends to be is you've not pulled any water through the, um, through the boiler. So when you go to turn the heating on for the water heating, um, the boiler will recognise it's getting too hot too quick because there's no water in there and it will then shut down and you'll need to reset it. So just bear that in mind. Make sure that you're filled up with water first, you prime your system and then turn your heating on. If you go into the settings panel, there is actually a reset button in here as you can see, which is just up there. There's also a few other options like, the, you know, you can change the, the brightness of the screen, the language and things, but the main thing you'll need to know is the reset button in there. So it's dead easy. Um, but going back to this, as I say, if you're hooked up on site, you'll run it off your 230 volt electric and you can run that off 1, 2 or 3 kilowatt electric. And if you're wild camping, you can run it off gas. If it is especially a cold day, I'd recommend just sticking it on gas to begin with, just to get it up to temperature and then flick it over to electric. Um, and in some cases, if you're abroad and you are limited to 1 kilowatt electric due to the power output that they provide, you probably again better put it on gas. To turn this off, all you need to do is hold this button and that will then turn off the Aldi control panel, just like that. So coming away from the control panel and into your kitchen area, uh, you can see that you've got your fridge here along with your uh, microwave at the top. As I mentioned on the outside, that is a 230 volt microwave that will only work when you're plugged into electric. Just by, bear that in mind. You've got a little bit of storage up here. Same again goes for underneath here. And I've got all the vehicles, book packs and paperwork 
all on here for you. Now the fridge, this is a Dometic fridge and it's a three-way fridge, which basically means that you can power the fridge three ways. So you can either run it off electric, 12 volt, um, which is your leisure battery, or gas. So you can see at the moment in the up position, the fridge is turned off. Just by turning this dial, you can then select which fuel you want to uh, you want to use, basically. Uh, now, I'll keep it turned off for the time being, and then you can see on this side, you've then got, obviously, the temperature gauge. Now, once you've set which fuel you want, and obviously what temperature, um, you've got a couple of options, obviously, uh, that you need to know about. So, uh, if I open the fridge up, you can see you've got your freezer up at the top and your fridge below. I'd recommend, if you, especially if it's a hot day, putting frozen things in the freezer and cool things in the fridge, as it will just maintain it a lot better. It does struggle sometimes, the fridge, especially on hot days, to get the um, temperature down. Um, but it does a really good job at maintaining, so I'd recommend doing that. Put frozen things in the freezer and cool things in the fridge. Now coming back up to uh, the fuel selector, obviously when you're hooked up you're going to be running it off 230 volt. Um, now a lot of people think that they can run the fridge off the 12 volt leisure battery when they're wild camping. However that's not the case, you can only run it off gas. Because if it allowed you to run it off your 12 volt leisure battery it would just take so much power out of the battery you'd be left with nothing. So when you're wild camping you can only run it off gas. The only time you can run it off your 12 volt leisure battery is when you're travelling. Because when you turn the vehicle on this vehicle has got a built-in alternator which will send charge from the vehicle battery into the leisure battery and will then charge and top up the fridge. So that's the only time you can run it off your 12 volt. And you need to select which fuel you've got every time you get on your campsite. Now as I said, at the up, in the up position like this it is off, um, but when you're on your campsite you can then flick it to whichever setting you want. Uh, as I say, temperatures on here you might as well keep that on the max. And then if you are running this off gas, you've got a little igniter switch here. Push that in to ignite it and allow the gas to flow through. Moving around from the fridge and into the kitchen area, we've obviously dis discussed about priming your system. Uh, up at the top, you've got a really nice bit of storage as well. Uh, and here is your hob and your oven and grill, which is below. Your hob has got an electric plate, which is dead handy. So if you're plugged into electric, you can use it. And then you've got three gas burners as well. Now, looking down... On the floor of the kitchen area, you can see that you've got two hatches. The first hatch is where your water, your fresh water tank is concealed, and the second hatch where I'm stood here is where your wastewater drain down point, uh, sorry, uh, tank is stored. I've shown you where the uh, the drain down point is for the wastewater. So if I lift this up, you can see it exposes the tank. You've got a red cap there, so you can actually unscrew that, and if you wanted to clean this, you can do. There isn't really much need um, to obviously open that. It's really only if you wanted to clean it, you know, maybe once a year, um, just to uh, just to give it a swill out. Now, next up, as I mentioned at the front here, this is where the fresh water tank is, and you can actually drain down the tank here. So, as opposed to the um, the the, the wastewater tank where you've got a handle on the outside, this is all done from the inside of the tank. So, remove this. Simply turn this grey cap here, like so. That removes, and just in the tank, I don't know whether you can see it in there, there's actually a metal chain. I'll pull that out for you. And you can see the metal chain is there. To drain this tank, all you've got to do is pull that metal chain. There is a little bung that's attached to there, and that will drain down the entirety of the fresh water tank. Like I said, drain all the water on your campsite, and then simply leave that open um, just when you're traveling home because all the residual water will find and make its way out so it's dead easy dead simple and then obviously when you're using the tank again make sure you put that bung back in so then that way it's not going to drain out as soon as you put your water in and you're going to use the vehicle now coming into the lounge area i'll go into the rear once we've done this front section you can see you've got a really generous lounge your two captain seats at the front they swivel all you've got to do is pull this lever here, that will release the mechanism and allow you to swivel them seats. And then you can see here you've got two passenger seats for when you're travelling um, with any guests. And they've got, they're of course, fully belted as well. Now underneath the uh, left hand side you can see I've just removed the cushions. 
um, and you can see you've got a really good bit of storage underneath here. You've also got some additional cushions here because this front section actually makes up into a bed, which I'll show you in this video. So to make this up, all you've got to do, this drops down and this actually slides out like so. So nice and simple, that meets onto that side. This table in the corner then, as you can see, there's a little rail, which is just located down there. You fold the leg in on itself and that leg, uh, sorry, that rail, uh, or the table rather, sits into that lower rail and that fills that gap there. And then this front section can be used as a bed should you want it. Then as you can see, I've just dropped that table just down. Like I mentioned, the leg halves, as you can see, it's a little bit difficult to show you there. That leg will half and that will then take the weight of the table base. This is then the platform that you can build the front bed with. So you then use the infill cushions to turn this area into a bed. As you can see with the cushions rearranged, the small ones on the back go into the middle. You've then got this small infill which slots into the centre here to fill this gap. And then you've got a second base here if you're wanting to the, turn this into an L-shaped lounge which can then slot onto the end of the table there and make this into a bed for two. Right, here, so moving on back into the lounge area, uh, you'll notice that you've got these vents here which are just located in the floor. This is where the heating comes through, so that Aldi heating, which is obviously a wet central heating system, runs through the floor. It'll keep this area nice and warm. Before I put back the table, you'll notice that you've got a little button here. Um, this is actually for the freshwater tank heater. So if it was a really cold day, um, and you didn't want uh, the fresh water tank to, to obviously potentially freeze, stick that on, that's an heated element that's located on the inside of the tank and that will just heat that tank to avoid it from freezing. Um, spe it's specifically used for obviously when it is a really cold conditions outside. So flick that on and it will ensure that nothing freezes. Now as I mentioned, you can turn this front section into an L shape should you want to. To do that, you've got a little board here this board slots onto there and slides into this groove here and then that will then create an L, like so. So with that board in, in this uh, position, you then all you've got to do is get this seat base, the seat base just connects onto there, slots onto there and it gives you a nice L shaped lounge should you want to use it. Then backrests that I did use, which are just actually here, these can then fit onto here, like so. And that will just complete the L-shaped lounge should you want to use it. Now in the lounge located underneath the two uh, passenger seats, uh, well, you'll also notice where your RCD breaker is. So if the vehicle ever trips, you can simply come to this point and conveniently place your fuses are just located underneath. Now I'd recommend taking some spare fuses with you because if anything ever blows, it's dead easy to replace a fuse. Just take some generic uh, fuses that you can pick up from Halfords, anything like that. Um, and as I say, if anything blows a fuse it, uh, or pops rather, you can just replace the fuse so it's nice and easy. There are no generic fuses, so just pick them up from... Uh, uh, sorry, there are no specific fuses, they're just generic fuses, so just pick them up from Halfords um, if needs be. And then finally, moving out of the lounge, you have got a little insert here that, as you can see, just flips up. Great for putting your shoes in here or anything like that. And then you'll also notice there's a point where you can lift this up. It's a little bit difficult to do with the one hand, but underneath here is where your leisure batteries are stored. So you can lift this up just like so and access your leisure batteries should you want to. But that's only really if you're changing them or anything like that. This motorhome has also got a leisure battery, uh, sorry, a solar panel fitted. You can see that the solar panel charger is just located here, directly next to the control panels, and this will indicate uh, how much charge is going into the battery. Now, as that is your regulator, you can simply leave that as it is. You don't need to do anything with it. That will just regulate how much charge is going into the battery. So moving back into the rear of the motorhome and into the bedroom area. On the one side here, you've got a really good bit of hanging space. This tank here is the Aldi expansion tank, and this is where you can fill it up with something called glycol solution. Glycol solution is an antifreeze solution, uh, and as I've mentioned previously, as this is a wet central heating system, you can top that up in there and it will just stop the tank from freezing, um, or the boiler from freezing or anything like that. 
Uh, and then you can also see you've got your aerial which is located at the back here. You've got a little switch to turn that on. I'd personally just leave that on. You can see at the moment it's indicating, or oh, it's lighting up green, which indicates that we're getting a good signal. This will change from amber to red to green, depending on your signal. Obviously red isn't the best, amber's okay, uh, and green is the best. To improve your signal as well, if it is a, an area that's not the greatest, all you've got to do is, some, uh, is simply turn this and then push the aerial up into position and then tighten that, uh, that white bracket in place. You've also got a little handle here so you can wind this and tilt the head of the aerial to improve your signal as well. And then finally on the signal finder here you have also got a little dial which you can change from min to max to again improve the signal. To divide the front from the rear you've also got this slide out uh, blind here that pulls off and this is just on a concertina blind which then connects via magnets and that will give you a little bit of privacy from the front to the rear in the bedroom area. As this is the French bed model um, in the corner you've got your bathroom area. Now we've spoken obviously about priming your system for your tap and your shower. The main thing that I need to tell you is of course um, how to operate the blade on the toilet. Now the blade that I keep uh, uh, banging on about is uh, this, is this piece of uh, grey plastic here. So at the moment it is closed. If I push that blade across and away from me um, that will open the cassette. So you need to open the blade for two reasons. That will allow you all the waste to drop in uh, to the cassette and also that when you press that blue button up on the top that will flush the cassette so everything then can drop into the cassette once you've done that close the blade straight away you close it mainly to obviously stop any odors from escaping but secondly it will get you in the habit of having that closed so when you come to remove the cassette on the outside as i've previously shown you it won't get trapped or stuck in place now as i mentioned the blue button here will activate your flush you do need your pump on for that to activate so bear that in mind and when the cassette is nearly full you'll get a little red light on this panel here to indicate that it needs emptying and then finally we've got your bedroom area um, now as this is a french bed you can actually lift this bed up and access underneath it which i'll do for you now and you can see with the bed in the upright position it gains you uh, all the access to the storage underneath and as, you as I mentioned before, that's the little locker which you can access on the outside. Now, the reason I've popped this bed up is to access your boiler. So your boiler is in the corner here, and this is, like I say, an Aldi boiler system. Now, I, uh, I appreciate it does look quite complicated. The only thing that you need to know is how to drain this boiler down. So this leads us on to your final drain down point in the motorhome. Uh, again, like I've said, for all your drain down points, when you're on site, drain the majority of the water on site and then travel with everything open as that will ensure that all the water makes its way out. And this is probably the most important drain down point. You need to always ensure that this is drained down when you're not in use. Because as I say, you don't want to get frozen water in here or else you'll need a new boiler, which as you can imagine isn't cheap. So just bear that in mind. To drain the boiler, you've got this yellow tab here. A bit difficult to see on camera actually um, but this little yellow tab here and the upright position is open and then flick it down to close it so up to drain it and down to close it so when the vehicle's in use stick this down that will complete the circuit and allow you to pull water from the fresh water tank into the boiler but then when you're not using the van simply flick that up that will drain all of the boiler out um, and then you'll be good to go. You won't run the risk of freezing. And that concludes pretty much everything on the handover. Final things I will go through is in all your windows, you'll notice that you've got fly screens and blackout blinds that you can use. And to open these windows, you've got little latches here, which if you just open up like so, you can push your windows out. Using the black knobs on the end, they can tighten the window in position, but always make sure when you're traveling back, these windows are sealed. You can put them on venting if you wanted, but please ensure that they're all completely sealed for when you're traveling. Another check for you to do is obviously make sure that your aerial is pulled down for when you're traveling off. And then finally, the same thing for your skylights. To open these, all you've got to do, press this in, slide the plastic handle back, and then to lock in, press it all the way up. And again, fly screens and blackout blinds are all included in all of your skylights 
and windows around the van. And that concludes the handover video on this Bailey Autograph Approach 745. I hope you enjoyed it.